I love when coaches, consultants, and professional service providers want to do big things in their business. They want to rise to the top and influence their market and the world around them. They want to have a greater impact and make a more lucrative income. Well, if this is you, welcome to Expert in You Podcast, the show where I interview other experts and coaches, consultants, so that they can share their success strategies with you. We're going to talk about marketing and how to close more sales, how to get more premium clients, and how to really build your visibility in the market and scale your business like a boss. If this is you, welcome to the show. I want to ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell right now so you don't miss one episode. Grab your coffee and buckle up because we are ready to give it all to you to help you become the expert and get paid as the expert that you are. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Expert in You Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Carden, and I'm so excited you are here with me again this week as I interview the amazing Scott Aaron. He is doing so many great things out there for businesses and professionals in the online world. And we are going to dive into all the things that he can help you with when it comes to lead generation, client acquisition, and he's just an authority expert. So Scott, thank you so much for being here. Welcome to my show. Thank you, Anne. It's uh, an honor and a privilege and just really grateful to be here. So fun to get to connect with people like yourself. And I just, my podcast, just like yours, is probably, it's one of my favorite things that I do in my business. How about you? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's almost six years now with mine, so I don't... Oh, you're see, you're even farther ahead than I. I think I'm I don't plan on stopping years. anytime soon. It's <laughs> Same. Great way to meet people, too. It definitely is. So Scott and I have a little bit that we do that is similar, but I never believe in competition, collaboration, and then, you know, people... We both are experts on LinkedIn, but that's a big piece of his business. And so, Scott, how would you, what would you like to dive into today to share with my audience what it is you do and then what you want to share with them today? So, you know, my, my wife and I are very blessed to to run our business together. It's called The Time to Grow, and we we do different things. So we have three different businesses within the company. One she runs with our team. It's called the BYOB Agency. It's a repurposing agency for insurance brokerages. And then myself personally, I focus more on LinkedIn coaching and consulting. I've been doing that since 2012, 2013-ish. It was never supposed to actually turn into a business. I was really using LinkedIn for myself as I was pivoting in the fitness industry from doing in-person training and counseling And I wanted to kind of broaden my horizons and do it in the online space. And knowing that my ideal client was a business professional, I went to LinkedIn and just started organically using it. And in the process, created a system and a flow that people started asking me to teach that to them. Mm -hmm. And some were even offering to pay me. And that was kind of like that. (laughs) Sometimes our thing finds us, right? (laughs) Exactly. So that it it turned into a business in in 2013. I've been doing it ever Mm -hmm. since in in, in different facets. You know, uh, I have a private group membership that people can join. I have a DIY Mm -hmm. course. I do group coaching. I do one-on-one consulting. And uh, I also do keynotes and speaking. I, Mm -hmm. you know, think, like you said, things kind of come to you. I ended up making a great connection with someone on LinkedIn that invited me to do a paid speaking event for her company in in Orlando, Florida, a couple of years ago. The sponsor of the event happened to be from Caesars Entertainment. Those were the ones that were actually paying me to come speak. And the representative that had this account from Caesars just fell in love with my strategy and and how I taught the workshops that I do in person. And basically Mm -hmm. Caesars onboarded me as one of their keynotes for their top accounts. So uh, over the last two years, usually about one a month, I go and do a paid keynote somewhere for one of their accounts. And it's been great exposure, written a few books. And then myself and my wife together, we run a mastermind called Expert Authority, where LinkedIn is a a key piece of it. So we believe in organic Mm -hmm. visibility and reach. And, you know, we have written our own book together called The Feel Good Business Model, where we work three days a week, you know, having a a very high profitable business with low overhead and, you know, working less 
uh, living more. And we kind of teach that in our model, helping people grow and scale their offerings, um, you know, optimizing, you know, what they have to offer within their websites, their lead magnets, group coaching and everything. And we want to be that one-stop shop for people that, you know, they're at a good place in their business, but they want to get to a great place in their business. And we help them achieve that. Very good. So who are the best clients for you? So right now, the the traditional people that we work with that we serve best are people in the coaching and consulting fields, whether that's business coaching and consulting, private <laughs> consulting, but also service professionals. So we work with lawyers, mm -hmm. we work with accountants. If you provide a service and you have something tangible to offer a specific demographic of people, we can show you how to get it in front of more of them. Right. I love that. So let's talk about your book back there. What is it again? Feel good. It's called the feel good business model. Okay. Let's talk about that. Let's dive into that just a little bit. What does that mean exactly? So business doesn't have to feel bad. It doesn't have to feel icky, but you know, it's taken myself and my wife seven years to get our business to where it is, where we've hired a full-time COO. You know, we have a team behind us. It wasn't like that in the beginning. My wife says that a lot of people are still living in this fast food type of economy mm -hmm. where they want to just press the easy button and they're going to be making gobs and gobs <laughs> of money. They don't want to do the work. Right. And my wife and I, we still practice what we preach. You know, we are still in the trenches, obviously not as, as, as much as we were when we were starting out the business seven years ago, but the feel good business model is based upon the structure that we put into place from the very beginning to where mm -hmm. we are now so other people can start connecting the dots. You know, understanding your client avatar, understanding your core offerings and your ladder of value, understanding that social media is rented land. And I think that's a, a key piece. So many people oh, rely sure. so much on their social media, you're forgetting to build that email list outside of it. Mm -hmm. And then obviously my take on the storytelling side of things, like how do you convey your message when you are creating content on social media? How can you position yourself as that go-to person with your content? But also for me, one of the, the key aspects of building any business is relationship marketing. And I think that there's diminishing value on that. Again, everybody just wants to set it and forget it. They want to mm -hmm. automate every aspect of their business. For me personally, nothing has helped our business grow and scale than building the relationships that we have and we continue to do so. And that's where we get referrals. And you end up not having to sell as much as you maybe once had to because right. impacted people in so many ways that your name starts to populate so often that people start actually finding you. So mm -hmm. we really tell people, you got to get in the trenches. You got to get clear on exactly where you want yourself and your business to be three years mm -hmm. from now, five years from now, 10 years from now. Think about the end of mine, think about where you are right now and fill the gaps and holes in between where you are to where it is that you want to go. Yeah, I, I love that. And I, it's so true. I mean, you know, I've been an entrepreneur for 34 years and all of those businesses built through relationships, through being more visible, stepping up, stepping out. And I think all of those things are so important. People have to know about you, but also they have to like you. They have to trust you. And that is where, and, and honestly, that's really what made me be able to go from one business to the next is I already had people that knew me, that believed in me, that trusted me. And even when I stepped into coaching, my first clients were coaching clients. They were people, they were business owners that I was networking with in my other businesses. And I said, Hey, I, I want to, I want to be a business coach, but I'm not sure if I can transfer my skills and my knowledge to someone else. And, but those were my first clients and it was all because of the relationships that I built. So I love that. Now we have the opportunity to do that more online than, than ever before. You also did talk about building an email list. I, how long have you been building an email list, Scott? Because I think I learned about building an email list maybe in about 2010, seems like. Mm -hmm. When I started, I learned that in another business. I actually bought into a program to that whole email marketing thing, mm -hmm. but it was a game changer. And I, I just did a live, I just did a YouTube video around email marketing, but I would love to hear more. Yeah, I, I honestly, I knew nothing about email marketing or what an email service provider was until about 2017. Mm -hmm. And and that's when we started using one. But I would say in the last four years, 
that's when we've been really strategic in everything that we do to grow that email list. So we really went from an email list of a few hundred to almost 13,000 now, four years later. And you know, one of the things that really facilitated that we were doing it the right way, Nancy and I love Donald Miller. Everything that guy publishes and puts out is just pure gold. Mm -hmm. And his his one of his books, Marketing Made Simple, basically started to drive home that life begins at 7,500 emails. So mm -hmm. when you can get 7,500, mm -hmm. you know, people opting into whatever you have, whether it's workshops or, you know, free offers, mm -hmm. that's where a lot of the revenue of your business is going to be driven. So people like, there's a lot of people that really believe that email marketing is dead. Most of our business comes from our email mm -hmm. list because when we're, you know, in pre-launch for a workshop, launching a workshop, opening cart or closing cart for the various products and offerings and services that mm -hmm. we have, those sales are derived from the people that have chosen to be a mm -hmm. part of our email list. That's how we've grown um, you know, our, our book sales and, and we've mm -hmm. you know, released many of them. That's how we've grown our podcast because we broadcast out you know, our latest episodes to our email list. And that's the thing. We were in another mastermind that really kind of drove this home as well about four years ago that said social media is rented land. And I mentioned this earlier. So that really got us so hyper-focused that with everything that we do, it's going to lead to someone doing that mutual exchange. We're giving them something of free value, whether it's a download, whether it's a call, whether it's a checklist or a lead magnet in exchange for their email address so we can nurture them later. So mm -hmm. that's one of our core focuses. And it's what we recommend to everyone. You know, one of the big things that you we ask people that want to come into our mastermind is what's your email list size? And right. the, sc the scariest response that we hear from people is, I don't have an email list. I don't have one. <laughs> Right, and, right. and again, a, a lot can change very quickly. And I just want the audience to to really understand that, you know, even if you have a very small email list or no email list at all, you know, mm -hmm. they, as the saying goes, the best time to start was yesterday. The mm -hmm. second best time is to start today. So yeah. is, as long as you have that that objective in your mind and, and that clear strategy that, okay, I want to take people from online to offline. And that becomes your core focus. We all, we all mm -hmm. say like, between you and me, Anne, I wish I would have started building my email list when you did. I can't imagine <laughs> how much further. Well, I was in different businesses, so it was different at that time than what I what I have now. So I kind of had to start back over when I started coaching. But I do want to speak to that for just a minute because um, when I started building out those email lists, when I sold those last two businesses, that list was an asset to the business and it was worth money when I sold those. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing. And I tell people this all the time, your email list is an asset to your business. So think about it that way. And here's the other thing I just want to say, if email was dead, the gurus wouldn't still be doing it. And I'm talking about the Grant Cardone's and the, you know, the Dean Graciosos and the, and the people that are really out there that everybody knows their name, they would not still be using email if it did not work, if it wasn't still highly valuable. And I think the main reason why that is, is because you own that list. And I think that's, that's, right. that's the big thing. You know, you can, people can tell me all day long, the size of their follower account on LinkedIn or their followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I don't care. What's, How's that translated in the business, right? Exactly. Have, you and I both have of, a lot of followers on LinkedIn, right? But that yeah, I, that doesn't necessarily mean, yeah. And, you know, going back to LinkedIn, you know, I, this is what I always encourage people to do is turning your LinkedIn profile into one giant lead magnet. Because mm -hmm. the more that you optimize your LinkedIn profile the right way, whether it's mm -hmm you know, using some clickable links in the featured content section or in the top headline mm -hmm. portion where you have your name and your name pronunciation, where you can put a clickable link. That's mm -hmm. going to create curiosity because the more optimized your profile is from an SEO standpoint is you're going to appear in more search results on that first page, mm -hmm. which means more people are going to click on it. And if they're really interested in what you have listed on your profile, guess what? They're clicking on that link. It's taking them offline. And now you're actually converting curious people that are checking out your profile mm -hmm. into people that have opted in into your email service provider so they can be nurtured that way. Yeah. Let's share. Let's talk about some of the lead magnets that you have found work really well on LinkedIn. Obviously, you serve a lot of different people, different yeah. types of people on LinkedIn. What are some of the, and you're helping them, I guess, create the lead magnets, it sounds like. So what are some of the lead magnets that you see work the best on LinkedIn? 
Yeah. So for me, and and my my wife would would second this notion is you're always looking to position yourself as a thought leader. So as human beings, we try to overcomplicate the process. So when we tell people, listen, if you just created a simplistic checklist Mm -hmm. of 10 things that people need to do to X, Y, Z for their business, people will gladly give Mm -hmm. you their email address for that. So using myself as an example, there are two that I, I typically use on a consistent basis on LinkedIn. One is a lead magnet that people can find on my website. And basically it's a six page PD that shows people six steps to the beginning phases of optimizing your LinkedIn profile. So what you need mm-hmm. to do with your headline, your about section, or your summary section, your experience section, the type of groups that you should join. And that's that that's probably the best converting I would say lead magnet. There's a newer Mm -hmm. one that I've recently started utilizing. So there's a a wonderful company called Magpie owned by an incredible woman named Jane Duber. She's owned and sold about 17 different companies. And Magpie is an assessment or quiz company. Mm -hmm. And so she kind of turned us on to this that, you know, you need to vet out. It's not, it's not just important to collect emails, but vet out those emails. So quality over quantity. Correct. Yes. (laughs) So I created something called a LinkedIn scorecard assessment. So it's a Mm, two minute mm -hmm. assessment that people can take. It's broken down into five different categories. And it basically just asks people questions like on a scale of one to 10, Mm -hmm. you know, how well is your profile optimized, your marketing strategy, your content strategy, blah, blah, blah. And then at the end of it, once they take the quiz, they're emailed the results of that quiz. Mm -hmm. And it's also giving them the focuses of what they need to do. So say they scored really low on the optimization of their profile. It's going to say, listen, you know, with the results of your quiz, it looks like you need to spend some time, you know, really optimizing your profile. Here are some things that you can do. And then it ranks it from what you need to most focus on to what you kind of have in order and get in check. Mm -hmm. But also it gives people the option as a secondary call to action to, to join a private Facebook group and or book a call with me where mm-hmm. they can learn more about how I can work with people. So it, it not only acts as an email service provider collection agent, but it also acts as a lead generator. And mm-hmm. you know, people book calls with me all the time with that. So that's something that I push out there as well. So you have to think about as the business owner, what are the things that people need, mm-hmm. not what you think they want. So what right. are some, you know, a free infograph or a free download, a free checklist goes a really long way because we talk about that ladder of value. You have mm-hmm. to build a know, like, and trust. People don't buy from anyone that they don't know, like, or trust. So giving something of free value in the beginning goes a long way into the future. Hi, friend. I have an exciting announcement. I hope you're enjoying this episode of Expert in You podcast, but I have to ask you, have you checked out the latest issue of Expert in You magazine yet? It's jam-packed with rich content, powerful strategies, inspiring stories, and so much more to help you elevate your business and personal growth. Don't miss out. Go grab your digital copy now and join our community of experts making a difference every day. Go to expertinyoumagazine.com and check out your digital copy today. Transform your expertise into success with Expert in You magazine. It's not just a publication, it is a movement. Let's talk about your the ways that you are promoting your lead magnet. I mean, I know what I do and I know what I teach, right? But I'm always I always love to hear what other people are doing. What are all the ways that you're promoting that lead magnet on LinkedIn so that people are taking advantage of that and really opting in for that? Yep, three ways. The first way is I'm using the name pronunciation. So everyone gets a, a 10 second audio clip of their name. So instead of saying Scott Aaron, basically I can use that 10 seconds to basically say, Hey, check out my featured content tech content section, you know, check out my free infograph on how to optimize your profile. And thanks for checking out my profile, something like Mm -hmm. that. So you can direct people through that little name pronunciation, where it is that you want them to go. Second thing that I do is I do two LinkedIn lives per week. So I'm usually educating people on new features, new updates, changes to the platform, things that they need to pay attention to, strategies and such. I always lead with free value to obviously build a relationship second. Are you doing video lives or are you doing the audio? I tried the audios. It... Mm -hmm. 
I'm I'm a face to face type. Oh, person. so am I. I know I don't like the audio as much. <laughs> yeah, it's like I was talking to nobody. People were popping on there. It just it felt very disjointed. I know there's people yeah. that have audio rooms. I I love being able to to be seen and heard at the same mm -hmm. time. I'm a, I'm a very enthusiastic person. I talk with my hands a lot. And it's just how I get my energy out. So yeah. I, I did. And, and I always tell people before I make an opinion or a thought and a feeling about something related to LinkedIn, I have to try it first. So I did try a LinkedIn audio rooms for mm -hmm. a number of weeks. It just, for me, it just was not aligned with how I wanted to use LinkedIn. So yeah. I just, I do two video lives per week and I usually have a call to action in each of them. And mm -hmm. typically it could be, you know, um, I usually take a pause in the middle of the training and I would say, hey, as you're watching this or listening to this on the replay, if you feel like you're lacking with knowledge about LinkedIn and you want to know what you should be focusing on, just jump into the comments and just type the word me. If you would mm -hmm. like the link to take my free LinkedIn scorecard assessment after the training is done, I'll send it to you. So I get a mm -hmm. lot of people doing that. The third thing that I do is I always leverage the hyperlinks that you can add to every single LinkedIn edition for your newsletter that you can put in there. So having right. a LinkedIn newsletter, you mm -hmm. know, obviously you have a, a core base of subscribers. So right now I'm approaching 8,400 subscribers on my LinkedIn newsletter. It's called LinkedIn mm -hmm. Tips and Updates. It's a weekly newsletter. Every Friday it comes out. Uh, it's pretty standard. I have some images that talk about certain things. I have an accountability section, an action step section, and a takeaway section. And at the very bottom, I always give some call to action, meaning, mm -hmm. you know, want to want to maximize the SEO of your profile, click here to download my free LinkedIn profile optimizer or take mm -hmm. the LinkedIn scorecard assessment. Because, you know, what people don't remember, if they don't know this, with LinkedIn newsletters, there's two great things that happen with that. Number one, anyone that chooses to, su to subscribe to your newsletter gets a push notification from LinkedIn every time one is released. So that little notification bell at the top, yeah. it says, hey, Anne's released a new newsletter. It's called X, Y, and Z. Go check it out. But LinkedIn, second to that, also emails personally every yes. single subscriber. And there are those clickable hyperlinks right there from LinkedIn and yeah. on, the prof on the platform itself. So now you're getting in front of a warm market of people that are not only taking the time to read your newsletter, but if you're offering something of free value, they're going to take advantage of it. I love the newsletter feature and I, LinkedIn loves the newsletter feature too, by the way, everyone. I, I just did a, I did a training around this on how to utilize that because nothing can speed the know, like, and trust faster than using that newsletter feature because LinkedIn absolutely loves it and they are pushing it out. Just like Scott said, they are doing the heavy lifting for you. You just need to create the newsletter. And so it's a really fast way to also pull the right people into your ecosystem because they are showing that. A couple of things that we can talk about on the newsletter feature real quick is make sure it's really dialed into exactly what you're going to be talking about. So I, I actually have two. I have one that is specifically for coaches and then I have another one that's built around influence. And, and so you wanna get very specific in your newsletter. And that's really important. And a lot of people don't know that, like don't come up with something cutesy that people won't understand what the newsletter is about, right? What other tips would you have on the newsletter feature, Scott, that would help people? Yeah, so a couple of things. Number one, make sure that your frequency is either a weekly mm. or bi-weekly yes. newsletter. Daily monthly is, is not very good. Daily yeah. is just crazy. Daily is just too much, but monthly, yeah. that's better it's too for- too little. Well, it's for, that's better for a blog on your website. Yeah. Um, my thought behind it is if if someone chooses the monthly, there's probably someone else in your space that's mm -hmm. probably doing doing it on a more consistent basis. So they're going to yeah. get the eyeballs instead of you. The other thing is choose the same cadence as far as publishing date for your newsletters. Mm -hmm. Don't if you're going to choose Friday one week, don't choose Tuesday the next. Don't choose Thursday. You want to create a system and a flow. So mm -hmm. people are expecting it on that specific date. And that's why I like Fridays because I, I, I use my newsletter almost as like a week recap. So things that mm -hmm. I kind of spoke about in my videos and my poll questions and my general posts, it's all summarized and expanded upon mm -hmm. in that newsletter edition. And I would say the third thing, and going back to your point, don't be cute, be right. clear. <laughs> 
It's right. it, I, I can't tell you how clear, many people, not cute. Yes, yeah, I love clear, that. Not cute. You know, because <laughs> people try to get fancy with the names. And yes. that's I called mine LinkedIn tips and updates because I want it to be so abundantly clear when someone mm -hmm. is scrolling through and they're looking for maybe a newsletter to subscribe to about yeah. LinkedIn. They're gonna say, Oh, this one's all about LinkedIn tips and updates. So yeah. I want to subscribe to that. So and and that's where you see a lot of people kind of failing on the newsletter side because mm -hmm. They're just getting again. They're 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 overthinking it instead of just being so clear with exactly what the reader is going to learn by mm -hmm. subscribing to this newsletter. Now, I would say adjacent to that, when you're creating a LinkedIn newsletter, you it goes back to who you're actually connecting with. So here's the thing: if you are building a LinkedIn network around coaches, consultants, service providers that are interested in wanting to leverage LinkedIn. I'm using myself as an example. Mm -hmm. It's going to make sense for them to want to subscribe to a LinkedIn tips and updates newsletter. But right. if I was just, you know, spraying and praying and connecting with anyone and everyone on LinkedIn mm -hmm. that did not care about how to leverage LinkedIn, when they're offered the opportunity to subscribe to my newsletter, they're not going to because right. they have no interest in that. So I think one of the best ways to really grow, scale, and optimize your LinkedIn newsletter from a foundational piece first before it kind of blasts out into the ethos of LinkedIn is make sure the network that you're building is the right network that would appreciate mm -hmm. the newsletter that you're going to create for them. And I want to repeat that the newsletter that you're going to create for them, not for you, because it, you're not doing it right. for you. You're doing it to leave all those around you better. So everything that you're pushing out is to serve those connections. So you mm -hmm. can bridge that gap between those that don't know you to those that are going to get to know you. Very good. Wow, we could talk all day. I know you and I could like geek out on LinkedIn. <laughs> it's such a huge piece of what we both, it's a yep. business for you. It's a huge piece of what I help people do in their marketing and absolutely love the platform. But this has been such a great conversation, Scott. How can people get a hold of you besides that you can connect with him on LinkedIn? But what are some other ways that they can get a hold of you or what would you like to share or lead people to? Yeah, uh, your if assessment. Any yeah, I mean, if you go onto my my LinkedIn profile right at the top, it'll say, you know, take your LinkedIn assessment so you can click mm -hmm. on it right through there. Or if you want to learn how to start optimizing your profile from an SEO perspective, because LinkedIn is a search engine, it you can is. just go to scottaaron.net and it's right at the top of the page. It's a six page PDF and it's basically to give you the beginning steps of what you need to do. You, you can find me on all the platforms. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff. And again, mm -hmm. I, I want to be omnipresent, but my main central focus is always LinkedIn. You can subscribe to my newsletter and my my trainings and stuff and anything that I can do to leave people better. That's exactly what I seek to do. Yeah, I absolutely love it. Thank you. This has been such a great conversation and I look forward to getting this out to people and letting people see exactly what you're all about. And I, you have some takeaways here that you can go and do immediately. And again, Scott has some resources for you that you can take advantage of as well. So Scott, thank you so much for being here with me. This has been fun. Thank you. And I, again, I appreciate the opportunity and I hope the audience took a lot away from it. And uh, if they're thinking about leaving LinkedIn, Hopefully we have swayed their decision not to because it's an incredible platform. You know, before we leave, I just want to add one thing to that. I always say, and, and Scott mentioned it, LinkedIn is a search engine. It is the number one business platform in the world. Yep. And, and so it comes up at the top of Google when anyone searches you and you've got your profile optimized. Often it comes up above your website. And it is like a mini website. I say this all the time. LinkedIn is like a mini website. There's no other platform out there that hosts things the way LinkedIn does. And even if you didn't have a website and you were just getting started, LinkedIn could actually serve as a website for you. And again, it'd come up on Google. So even if you're not going to play on LinkedIn, you need to be on LinkedIn. If you are in business, you need to be there. It is It's a free asset. Why would you not do that? It is a free digital 
asset to build out your footprint and your positioning online. So I, I do hope we encourage people because I absolutely love the platform. You love it. It's been a game changer for me and my business. And everyone's not on Facebook, you know, LinkedIn. If you look at all the stats, the millionaires are on LinkedIn. Fortune 500 companies are on LinkedIn. Every uh, higher every, income. Every Fortune 500 company has a presence on LinkedIn. It is the only social media platform that has that statistic, but also what people also understand, 88% of the people on LinkedIn are in a decision-making role. Yes. So, yes, and it has two times the buying power too. Yeah, so play in the sandbox yeah. where the decision-makers are. Exactly, yes, 100%. So, uh, so great, so great. So thank you so much again for being here. Go check Scott out, get, get his free resources. And until next time, if you need help in your business, you're ready to get into those you want to get those 40K to 150K plus clients, months, or paydays, then reach out to me. Let's book a call at acarden.com. We'll take a look at your business and strategize to help you achieve that. So thank you so much. And until next time, God bless you. Have an amazing day. Thank you for tuning in today. If you're as excited as I am about scaling up your influence, business, and bank account, then I have just the thing for you. But first, make sure you subscribe to the show. Second, Make sure you share it with someone you care about because sharing is caring. And third, head on over to join me in my next free virtual exclusive workshop where we'll explore proven strategies to boost your business and maximize your potential. Look, it doesn't matter if you're just starting out or if you're looking to take your business to the next level, my workshops are designed for you. So head on over to expertinyourworkshop.com to reserve your spot and get ready to transform your expertise into extraordinary success. I'm looking forward to seeing you there and helping you achieve incredible growth. Until next time, make sure you're always seeking the expert in you and God bless. Have an amazing day.